Greetings and salutations. I'm going to do a video today about a cheap soldering iron versus a more expensive soldering iron. We have here a Weller WE1010 120 volt 60 hertz and 85 watt unit. And then we have a Xtronic Model 3020, so just some generic Chinese soldering iron. These are fairly comparable in that they both have a digital readout, power switch. So this one shows a set point temp at the bottom here, and then it shows it moving over to it. Whereas this one flickered the set point temp at the beginning and then shows you the current number that we're going towards. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that apparently this one reaches up to temp a little faster than apparently this one does. Uh, so that's, that's interesting. This is the first time I've done this side by side. One thing that the more expensive station has that the uh, inexpensive one doesn't is that this is ESD safe, whereas how you plug it in uh, to the tip is grounded. The next thing is the station. As you can see, the Weller has a disconnected base, so you can move this wherever you like and uh, pop this in and out as you see fit. Whereas the Xtronic does not, it is a fixed station and you have to move this all around. This is much, much lighter than this. It does have a sleep function, I have it off, and uh, there's a lot of features you can kind of go through with this. You, you set by pushing push buttons up and down versus the more inexpensive one, you have to dial it in by moving a, a little dial. You notice when I set it, it will then slowly drip down. Whereas this one, you, you do the set point, and again, the set point shows up at the bottom, and then it will show the top number going tor towards it. Whereas this one, you have to move it to see the number where you've set it. It'll show you that number, and then it'll show it climbing. Don't know if I necessarily trust that. Don't think it's actually reaching it that fast. The tips are changed fairly similarly, where you just unscrew a collar. This one is easier to change while it's still hot, whereas the more inexpensive unit requires, that's, that's hot because it's metal, you'd have to just use some sort of wrench to, to unscrew this if you wanted to too hot swap it. They both run very similar tips. The Weller tips won't work in here. Their diameter is different just enough where these won't work in there and those won't work in here, vice versa. So nothing new there. Uh, the Weller station comes with spots where you can put the tips you're not currently using, whereas this one does not. And while I was using this one, I actually had 3D printed a little tip stand holder for this, as you can see. Next thing you'll notice, the Weller does allow for you to easily swap the connector in and out. So you can change out different irons, tips, uh, you can even swap out and use the same power unit for a pair of tweezers. Whereas this is what you see is what you get. You uh, don't get to do much swapping if this goes out. You pretty much have to get an entirely different unit. This will give you degrees Celsius if you go into the settings and do so. All of the menu options are buried in here. That's where you set the sleep. Temperature set points, you can have multiple set points. And uh, as well as the degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. It's currently showing Fahrenheit. Whereas this one, there is no menu option. The sleep is hard coded in as 10 minutes, which determines it, I believe, by whether or not it sees fluctuation in the temperature while using it and the temperature is set with this potentiometer and the Celsius Fahrenheit is set by sliding a switch on the bottom. So all very manual, whereas this is, is more digital between the two. Both do have an option to hold a sponge. The cheaper one came with a Brillo pad with some solder tin at the bottom of that. 
So nice and fancy there. And there we go. Melt it away in there. Very nice. As you can see by how clean it is, I typically don't use that one. I'll typically use this secondary unit to clean the tips. This one comes with a sponge pad. Didn't come with its own Brillo pad or tin material, tinning material, pardon me. Very nice. You can see the real-time update. It was a little more accurate with the more expensive one. The next thing is the quality of the components. This is, of course, very light. This is quite weighted. You notice a difference in, in just handling the two of them. Much more difficult to maneuver. The cabling here, this cabling is much more rigid. It's, it's likely just some sort of cheap plastic, not really rubber, where this is nice rubber material. And if you'll notice at the 670 temperature, we'll get this to 670 as well. There we go. You'll notice this does not necessarily burn through if I brush it across there, but that does not really burn through it. I'm sure you could could burn it. There's a little scuffing. You can kind of see right there, right here, a little bit of scuffing, but nothing too bad. Whereas this one, brushing up against it, will burn through it much more noticeably. Still not terrible. It'll, it'll survive a couple of accidental brushes, no problem, though the scuffing is a bit more noticeable. Maybe not so much on camera. <clears throat> the cable is much more rigid. It has a tendency to fold in upon itself. I often had to kind of tuck this off to the side while using it to pull the, the tip out and work with it as needed. The grip on here does have a little rubber grip. It still is a pencil, so it's easy enough to handle and maneuver. So. The feel is, is good, it's all right. Feel on here isn't rubber, it is more of a foam, which uh, feels a bit more softer. This cable doesn't bunch up. I can kind of have this wherever I like. I could even solder almost right next to the thing, like so. Uh, I don't feel the heat as much on this tip here as I did holding this one. And uh, the grip is noticeably more comfortable. It's this foam. Don't know how well this will last, but I've had wellers, I've seen wellers in classroom settings and they look to be in good shape. So I don't doubt that this would last better. Strain relief. Anytime you get a more expensive unit, you would hope to see more strain relief on the cable, even though this cable is more flexible. Doesn't really need more strain relief, but it does give it. Whereas this is just a, a cheap plastic one that'll likely break more at the base uh, than it would anywhere else. Other than that, um, I primarily used this because it was inexpensive. I was able to get it off Amazon and uh, I just wanted something with a digital readout. Didn't really care for all the bells and whistles. As I progressed and I started to be more cautious of static, we'll say, as I moved on to from primarily through hole and base component surface mount to more microcontroller surface mount stuff, the anti-static feature was, uh, was needed and I was semi-surprised at uh, the quality you could get for not that much more than this, honestly. This is one of the things where the price difference is so close, I guess it's not the same obviously, but it's close enough to where the added features, comfort, material is is worth saving up the extra the extra money to just go straight to this as opposed to making do with with something like this. Now if you had just the pencil where you didn't have a temp control, uh, the price difference is much greater, but without a temp control, that, at that point you're just tinning wires. It's not really comparing apples to apples. The reason I compared these is because this is fairly accurate. It's close enough. 
Uh, I haven't fried components that were sensitive. It's probably within 10 degrees. This is much more accurate. It's within like half a degree or so. I'm going purely off the spec sheets. But this one pretty much admits it's in the ballpark, whereas this one says it's it's really close. It's right on the money. The funny thing was, I used this primarily uh, going through school and in the labs. It's just because it was engineering school, I didn't quite pay much attention to the the lab equipment in the office. I once I became an engineer, I didn't really work on uh, the electronics directly anymore. They had technicians do that, so I didn't really use it that much after I got out. So when I needed something at home to play around with, I just went the cheapest option, which was this guy. And we're seeing what we had in the lab and everything, that's why I went with this brand. And the price difference being what it is, I seriously wish I didn't waste my money on this. It did give me a couple, a year or so of, of decent service, but uh, after I fried one or two micros with it, by some noticeable static discharge, I had to look for something that was more lab safe. This did the trick. Seeing what the price point was, was a little shocking. So knowing what I know now, I would have just saved up the extra couple of bucks and just went straight with this. Because if you're, you're so, if you're soldering, if you're buying, if you're in the market for a solder station, you shouldn't be hurting for cash, right? So I would, I would say just wait however long you have to wait and just, and just get the good, the, uh, the better quality one. Leave the, leave this one in China if you can. So uh, there you go. Until next time, I am the ill-informed human. Goodbye.